Welcome to another edition of Strange New Pod. I'm your Fleet Admiral and host, Julian Brown, alongside the best bridge crew this side of a surprise, Zindi. Uh, we have Vice Admiral Eric, who, speaking of the Zindi, is just here for the Zindi, hmm? I think. Yeah, Zindi. Hmm. Zindi time. Commander Hawk is also here, and he is scratching his stubble, wondering what Okana is doing here. What, <laughs> doing was, he his, doing what was he doing there? Yeah. And uh, finally, Captain Giraffe, who, like Eric, is here for one thing, and oh, yeah. that's Romulans. 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 I screamed. I, I, I mean. Did you, did you have, like, loud screams or, like, the giraffe, like, ah. Well, when they Screams. said the word neutral zone, I climbed on my on my couch and I started being like, oh. <laughs> and then like when they unclocked, I was like, oh. and then they gave me a black Roman commander and I fainted. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, them going into the Romulan neutral zone, and this is right after two episodes after the Borg Cube episode. We're not going to really talk about this. So I'm bringing it up now. That's giving more like legitimacy to the theory that that's the board cube that assimilated Auntie Ramda. So Auntie Ramda. Auntie Ramda. Hmm. Love her. Isn't I'm that earring gorgeous? Everybody's her. loving your your earring in the chat, giraffe. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I I want to buy Auntie Ramda's admonition rope on <laughs> the Isn't it just a black rope? <laughs> no, it's Oh, they it's have their actual the real one. Prop, the real one. And nice. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I didn't say it yet, but uh, Joel on True, guys. How you doing? How you doing this week? We good? This, this episode was the weirdest episode. We had Pike show up and Uhura was <laughs> there. And then they met up with Britney Spears for some reason. Man. Crossroads. Crossroads. <laughs> Cross, that, yes. Oh, you get a, you get a, I don't have anything to give you because everything claps, else claps, swears. Claps. claps. That claps. was really good. That was very good. I like that one. I like it. Crossroads. <laughs> crossroads. Speaking of crossroads, this week, what happens when Dahl and the team decide to bury the Protostar and find transport to Starfleet without it? What is Hawk the Outrageous Akona doing there? Why? 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 Uh, <laughs> and what happens when Janeway and her crew show up at the same outpost looking for doll and co we're gonna break it all down but first eric it's back to you we need to thank those patron collective members at the ready room level and above apparently i'm very quiet so i'm gonna put myself louder oh there you you're go. very loud now. now you're loud now you're good <laughs> am i loud now guys hold on you sound it's good okay. to it's me good. it's good i'm going louder 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 more reverb Turn it up to eleven. I gotta put us put me up here. Is this better? Yeah, you moved yeah. me. Okay. I I yeah. like I switched all my stuff because of God of War, because um, yeah. I've been playing it on my computer. Let me know if I'm too quiet on the YouTube -y thing. Um, anyway, so we're gonna thank our Patreons here. Thanks to Simon Steger, Jeff Reeve, Mariah Gossett. Tallulah, Jen Stein, Tina Alexander, Joe Saparito, Noe Santo, Kung Hui, Takako Nagumo, Kara Kennedy, Mark, Fernanda Nogales, SMK, Laura Linderman, Colin Davidson, Alan Davis, Shatterhand, 2049. Uh, sorry, I just saw that more cowbo. Uh, Jesco, <laughs> MC Frodis, Michael Graham, Emily and Travis, Gildara, Cassie, Raul, Summer Richie, We Don't Want Any Witnesses, Maggie Light, Trek in the Stars, Wayne Ritz, Scone of Arc, Sean, John, Jay Howard, Anna, Uridon. Uridon? Uridon. 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 Mahelani Uchiyama, Matt Harker, Joshua Lewis, and our newest collective member, Cassie McIntosh. Yay! 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 Hello, Cassie. Welcome. You rock. Bonjour. Our patrons <laughs> rock. Um, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of news on the Federation News Network this week. Let's start with the guy who got an unfortunate Discovery Season 1 reference, and that is Mr. Elon Fuckface Musk. Um, apartheid Clyde? Apart apartheid Clyde. Uh, we're so going to get, like, we're going to get blocked on Twitter now. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, dude, I think Twitter's probably going dark tonight anyway. So speaking of that, um, a few hours ago, hundreds of Twitter, Twitter employees called Elon's bluff and quit. 
So it doesn't really look like <laughs> Twitter's going to be around uh, much longer. Possibly could go dark this weekend. They've closed the offices. We're bringing this up. Why? Because we have a lot of followers on YouTube. Uh, and I'm, well, not we need you to follow us on YouTube more, too. So follow us on YouTube. Hit that bell. Yes. Hit the subscribe button. Ding, ding, ding. But we have a lot of subscribers on Twitter. And if it does go dark, we want to make sure you know where to find us. So it's really easy. We're at Strange New Pod everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, uh, now on Mastodon, uh, TikTok, at Strange New Pod. Really easy. Uh, debating, because Twitter's going away, we might create like a, a, fan, a fan group for Facebook that people can interact on as well. I know we have the Discord, so it's kind of... Uh... I don't know how to use Facebook. Well, it's it's. Not but you're hard, the right I... age group. You are? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Oh... <laughs> oh, aren't you the same age? <laughs> yeah, no, she's younger than me, I think. Ouch. I'm right, I'm younger than you. God uh, damn. <laughs> oh, you said God. the jokes are going to be gone. I had to add to them. <laughs> no, I was speaking about uh, me almost burning down my apartment. Yeah, yeah. we have to, we we have to go fast there, yeah. for draft because okay. her head hurts because of, you know, fumes. No, it's fine. <laughs> they okay, don't have fire cool. extinguishers on starships. No, they do. They do. Um, <laughs> they so do. they do. They do. Find us, find us at all of those places if Twitter does indeed go dark. Um, other bit of sad news: the official announcement came in. Star Trek mission, uh, Star Trek mission. I can't speak English. It's been a long week. Star Trek mission Seattle has been canceled. It's done. It's gone. They're not doing it. We are going to pull members where they kind of want us to. We're organizing our own con. We're going to organize our own yeah. con. Toronto. Strange New Pod con. Toronto. Let's Hamilton. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, possibly Canada. Definitely New York City Comic Con. Um, maybe. Uh, probably Fan Expo in Philly. We're weighing Fan our Expo, options. Expo, Toronto. Toronto. We're going to figure it out. So bear with us. It's really sad news. It's a failure on, on lots of people's parts. I'm not going to go playing the blame game but it's a failure of epic proportions it sucks i know everybody was looking forward to meeting up there we were looking forward to seeing everyone there unfortunately it's not going to happen uh we will have options that's the best we could do right now there's so, la con beginning la of con that's true uh <laughs> trek long island is coming up as well so lots of stuff um i hope that's on a boat I do. well there's the star trek <laughs> there's the star trek cruise, cruise and, and, and that's too much <laughs> The next part, if you haven't seen them yet, oh yeah, and, and and Chris wants to make sure that everybody knows that Julian Con is happening. Apparently, everybody's just going to come to my house and I'm going to crash, do, go put party. on a con and crash. So, yes. Billy. Um, Julian Con <laughs> is happening. Oh God, that's two people already. Christ. Okay, pins. Look at these beautiful things. They're in. They're beautiful. Eric killed it with the design, and now it's in a beautiful actual NML pin form these are going to be shipped out if you pre-ordered one if you haven't pre-ordered one of these we have some left so uh we'll put the link in the discord again make sure you order them 20 dollars that include shipping proceeds go to girls who code it's for a great cause they're beautiful pins and it's a great way to pay tribute to nichelle is, so is there a way to get fuzzy pins fuzzy pins yeah like i mean a, a, i mean a, a pin I'm that would sure. be fuzzy hmm, interesting maybe um that's then, for future design got you uh are you making triples maybe uh karen and i recorded the first patron uh cooking video uh we did pancakes and bacon and uh that's going to be up hopefully sometime this weekend i have to edit it and put it together um, are they bacon pancakes bacon no they're pancakes. banana pancakes bacon, bacon banana pancakes. pancakes with baked pepper bacon so that's coming uh, let's move right along, guys. We unless there's any other news. No, everybody good. No more news. Um, uh, we're gonna do more trivia because more trivia. everybody loved the trivia. So uh, I'm gonna organize a monthly trivia for our patrons with a little uh, something something. If you win the Star Trek trivia, <laughs> that got and sexy. Be careful because <laughs> yeah. it's very sexy. Uh, MC is gonna help me write the question. So be brave. <laughs> be brave. <laughs> be brave. Uh, Julian Khan is already sold out, apparently. The guest okay. list is amazing, and wait till you see the me menu. All right, Wayner. I guess Wayner's my organizer. I like it. Thanks, Wayner. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Let's get to the strange new loop. And uh, this is our final live show before Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving. Uh, but that being said, I want to ask you guys what you're thankful for. Nice, easy 
strange new loop. Maybe it's not. Maybe you don't know what you're thankful for. I hope you do. Let us know on YouTube. Giraffe, I saw your finger first. What are you thankful for? Trek related, not Trek related? Hit it. I'm thankful for Twitter, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> on the mood for today, like, I, I met everybody on Twitter. I I don't know. I I became part of the Star Trek community via Twitter. Uh, it started there. I have made a lot of friends during the pandemic in twi on Twitter. Like, you all. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, now that Twitter is dying, I'm thankful for, for the good time. And thanks for all the fish, I suppose. Indeed. I like that draft. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yep. Who else? I am uh, I am thankful for Martin Frobisher and his exploration of the Northwest uh, Passage. That's what Canadian Thanksgiving is. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but some people say that. What? <laughs> oh, man. What are you really thankful for besides that? Um, sleep. God, my CPAP machine. Yeah. I love my CPAP machine. It's, God, it's so good. <laughs> Life-changer. It really is. Are you new to the CPAP world, or um, no? I'm about like three or three months in, I think. So, oh, nice. yeah, it's getting getting actual sleep is actually really nice. I'm it also thankful nice. for this pile of Lego here that I've accumulated that I have not built, but you will eventually build, or maybe never. There are seven or eight sets there. Mm -hmm. wow, I have I have an lot. I have an issue. <laughs> Uh, Hawk, what are you thankful for? God of War. Uh, <laughs> that I am thankful for. Um, nothing in real life this year. Because, um, you know, this year, like the last couple of years, has been kind of a downer. Um, I am grateful for the long string of fantasy and sci-fi television series that we've had in the last few months. And that's it. This year was phenomenal for fantasy, right? Like, it's been it a while really since was. we had any. So... Mm -hmm. So. all really well done i mean like we got the adaptation of the sandman we got the lord of the rings of the ring of power and that uh andor which has been oh like God, a Andor's highlight of my so week. good unfortunately it's coming to an end next week but oh is it know. next week already i thought it was 12 it is, episodes it is 12 episodes it's next week is, it was 11 is today or yesterday oh my god yes i know <laughs> uh, uh so yeah uh as the year's closing out that was what i was most grateful for was that just that long string where it was just like we were inundated with stuff to watch every week? Uh, I like that. Uh, MC says that you should build your Lego live on stream. I there. usually do. I usually stream it. On a very like build. It. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over on YouTube, we have some good answers. Uh, Funnest Frontier, uh, that's Joe, says I'm thankful for the Trek Twitter community for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, MC says I'm thankful for Discord because it's not Twitter. Indeed. <laughs> uh, Maggie says I'm thankful for my family. This includes oh. my new Star Trek family. Yeah. Aww. Awesome. Oh. Uh, Haven, I'm thankful for Strange New Pod. We're thankful for you collecting. Yes. You guys rock. Yes. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, <laughs> thankful for new Quantum Leap show. It's great. Hey, there I you agree. Go. Funniest Frontier. I agree. It gets yeah. better. Yeah. yeah. I stopped at one episode. I was like, I don't understand. Did you watch <laughs> the uh, old one? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know. You might not have, so long. Um, But the new one's good. on them. Cut quantum. I am sad they don't have the theme song. Um, okay, sorry. No, it's okay. I like it. Uh, Takako says, I'm grateful for all the great Star Trek and Star Wars coming out. Speaking of Star Wars, side note, you guys mentioned Andor, but also I haven't watched all of them, but the ones I have watched, That's Tales okay. of the Jedi. Oh, it's oh, oh my God. God. It's so good. <laughs> oh, I got goosebumps that, just saying That last it. episode killed Incredible. me. Incredible. Yeah. Did you see the Grogu the cartoon? one killed me. Not yet. I, I, no, we it's, three, I it's three minutes, and it's three minutes of 100% adorableness. Yeah. I, I love everything I've watched of Tales of the Jedi. So nice. Um, and then uh, to continue to Kaka's and all the awesome fan produced content like this podcast. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. You guys are the best. I'm thankful for you guys. Yeah. Yep. Same. Um, I'm going to throw this one out. I, this year, especially with everything that this show has done and all the people that we've met and made contact and doing things like our Nichelle tribute, I am thankful for the Trek podcast community 
because there's a lot of awesome other Trek podcasts like Star Trek Discovery Pod, like Promenade Merchants Podcast, like the Dura Sisters, like God, all I mean, I'm probably Trek Untold, forgetting a bunch here. Uh, oh, oh, you know, Open Pike, just all, all all these great shows, and a lot of them are are new, and we've gotten to work with with some of them. We've gotten to meet them, and they're all run by wonderful people, and um, I'm thankful for them because uh this is this isn't a uh this isn't like a negative thing this is a positive it is a lot of work to put on these shows for you every week and the same goes for every other podcast like trek podcast that's like putting out weekly content and and, and i'm so thankful that it, it keeps coming because there's there's so much of it and all these other amazing people that are are doing hard work so I'm not even going to ask you guys for a review for us tonight. If you listen to other Trek podcasts, like the ones I mentioned or ones that I may not have mentioned, uh, I'm going to throw another like Trek geeks, like go give them a like, go give them a subscribe, go give them a quick five-star review because we all work our butts off and they all work their butts off to put out awesome Trek content, especially through the pandemic and through this year where we had God, how many weeks was it guys? Like 40 something straight weeks of Star Trek. So um please go do that one off (laughs) yeah yeah so i'm i'm thankful for the trek podcast community it is amazing just amazing people out there so uh should we get into it guys should we get into it let's do it it is our review of star trek prodigy episode 114 crossroads our order tonight will be hawk eric giraffe followed by myself let's start with them leaving the protostar behind so doll and the team they make the decision to to bury the protostar uh and they say their farewells to jane with janeway who wishes them luck on their journey they go seek transport to the federation so they could fill them in on what's going on with the living construct aboard the protostar pretty adult move by them to do this like right like this is their comfort place at this point like this is everything that they know together and they're leaving it behind what do you think about this huck it was yeah it was a pretty adult move and like a good strategy on their part in that since that you know the the ship itself and that it makes contact with any single starfleet vessel on that that they encounter that's it for them you know um so yeah it was hard to see it and you know you're you get a little bit clamped in that because yeah this is the only home this is the first real home these kids have known for a very long time and they're they're willing to leave it aligned be leave it because they believe in what they're doing and they believe in this mission to make contact with starfleet Uh, and Uh, and it's like not only is this their home but they're also leaving their artificial mother right because janeway's been their guardian and their their parent and their their role model this whole time so they're really going off on their own for the first time and it's it's a scary moment even like as a kid when you go off for the first time it's exciting but scary um and it's it these I don't even know how old these kids are supposed to be. They they seem like they're they range from like nine to maybe sixteen. I think Jack Pog's an adult. Like, I, he's right? an adult with the uh, maturity of a yeah, five year old. Five year old. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he's probably the least <laughs> mature person in that in that group. Um. But yeah, I, it, it was surprising that they they would have done something like this. Like, go off onto a planet they don't know and try and find help. Like that's that's a that's amazing. Yeah. Try. I had not think about it as leaving their mother behind, but that totally is like you when you leave home and you expect that anytime you're gonna come back, your mom is gonna be here exactly like you left her. <laughs> you know? In this and case, it's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In this case, it's true because, like, you know, in real life, you go back and you're like, oh, my mother is older, you know. <laughs> but they uh, changed yeah, my it's... they changed my room into an office. Weird, yeah, right? <laughs> Like, um, I just love anything that will make a starship land. So <laughs> I just love the shot. It's so, uh, what is it? Uh, timeless, you know, uh, or even discovery, uh, in the, st- why do they love so much having their ship like that in the ice? Love it. It's beautiful. So yeah. I it mean, does look pretty, right? Like it's, it's yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> reflections in the snow and the ice. Yeah. Oh man, mm-hmm. so nice. So yeah, it's an adult move. Uh it's definitely growth. 
and um and it's a beautiful shot too so let's go yeah, yeah this this is this is one of the the very few moments of this episode that i enjoyed uh it it, it is such a an adult move but it, like it, it it tracks for the, the way that the season has been going like they you know from from going to the board cube like one of the scariest places that you can go to you know and that, that there's a little like naivete there right because like they they don't really know about the board but they still do it like your kids like that's scary then you go help the the enterprises like that and and you know really save the day there and then after all of that you leave your ship your adopted dead mother you know she's gone all the while rock top baby wearing you know like being a mom basically to you know whatever murph hatches into at the end of the episode like it's a really adult move and it's really cool to see and i really like it that being said it doesn't then correlate into the rest of the episode we're gonna get into that any mm. other thoughts on uh leaving the protostar behind no no all right we're just I, bracing we're just bracing bracing <laughs> bracing <Yeah. laughs> the bracing for the volcano that is yeah. me in this episode uh so the, they they look for transport they they find akana for whatever reason and uh run into starfleet so yeah but he was a dj now he, yeah like what is happening <laughs> um the the team splits off uh, it's a zindi guys it's a zindi outpost how cool like we haven't seen zindi in any star trek and then oh prodigy yep. yeah zindi and the worst is India. <laughs> yep. Oh, fair. loved fair. it. <laughs> no, that, the, good point, Hawk. But hey, it's been a couple of hundred years. They're not the worst India anymore. They're probably, it, the, maybe not part of the Federation, but they're not trying to kill the Federation. So, progress. Not that we know. <laughs> not that we know of. Where uh, are the aquatics? <laughs> where? Where are the aquatics? Um, so yeah, this is Indy run outpost where they run into the fabulous Okana. Uh, yeah, so he he being the space pirate that he is, he tells the crew that he can help them secure transport on a ship that goes warp four. Uh, you know, because he knows the best people, blah, 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 blah. What, what did we think about Akana showing up in, in both animated shows now, this and Lower Decks, Hawk? Like I said, we've, we're still scratching our chin trying to figure this out, uh, all of us here. The only thing is, is like the episode he is famous for, the outrageous Okana and that, he was in that episode, the misunderstood fugitive from the law and that, you know, he was kind of looked at as like, you know, as a bad guy, even though we knew he wasn't, blah, blah, blah. Kind of parallels what happens with the kids later on in the episode, you know being fugitives on the run for all the wrong reasons. So for that, I think it's, uh, you know, his character is pretty appropriate to the situation, but again, I don't know what he actually contributes to the situation. Eric. I don't know if I can add anything. To that. <laughs> that was really good. Oh my God. I know. Like, I, yeah, I don't know what he's, he's going to bring. Um, I like that. We got to see him again. Was he played by the same guy? Yep, Billy Campbell. Yeah. Yep. Good for him. That's awesome. Yeah, um, it's pretty neat. He had the same charm as he did on TNG. So um I could see how the kids sort of grouped up with him, which is he kind of uh, stowed sort of, away, yeah. right? Yeah. It's also sort of weird that he's like, I'm I'm an adult. I'm gonna hang out with these children. Um, I need an adult. Um, but uh yeah, I I, I don't know. I Hawk, that was a very good description. <laughs> I can't add anything to it move on i i i want to know why like what is it that everybody is so obsessed about like that particular episode of tng i mean it's not a bad episode that's the best like, one either though it's no. it's because he's like a han solo-esque yeah. yeah, character and people thing. are like oh okay. han solo like in star trek a rip off of <laughs> han solo okay cool um i want to know what happened between him djing for like the biggest federation uh, uh right. starfleet party to being on a Xindi outpost trying to in the find middle a of warp nowhere or ship for kids like what happened was that the recession like what happened I maybe they blame the duplers on him uh, and he got banished uh, <laughs> yeah. oh man um i don't know i don't care <laughs> i just don't i just don't, I just don't care yeah 
Yeah. There's so many other characters they could have chosen for this, like to be like it. it could, I just don't care. Like, was it a cool little reference of him DJing in Lower Decks? Yes. Does he need to have an arc? Though, cool thing to know. Do I? I wonder. Does Jane Wayne know him? Is Why it going to be used in the um, plot? Like, what? I don't know. But I. Because because he was I, the DJ, <laughs> yeah, he's the DJ at the biggest. So she would know him because she would have a flyer from those parties. Well, uh, she must probably win. No, you don't think yeah. she won? Yeah, no, I think she does. I, I feel know. like she would party. Yeah, it's like two years, three years after she returned. Like party, girl, party, let's go. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> there's gonna be something. Maybe he knows something about Chakotay. Maybe. God, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> uh, just a, it's it's just it's 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 a it's a weird it's a weird choice. It's a weird but... pull and it's a weird person to bring along, right? Yeah. Like because he's yeah. gonna be in the next episode. We know that because he left with them. Yep. And it's just he's like still... okay, why? Yep. Like, I, uh, Maybe yep. it's just their book, you know. MC like goes, Jane Way hooked up with Okana at the party after she had a few drinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, what, do you think did you think she'd be cheating on Chakotay, though? Ew. Oh, I also oh, like... I also like, box, huh? I also like... <laughs> I, I had to. I like Jessica's comment. Uh, I was waiting for Chewbacca to show up, and the Zindi were just stormtroopers complete with bad aim. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so the team... While they're trying to, you know, get a vessel because they, <laughs> Jacob Pog, even though I can't, I still can't stand him. He he does have that funny, funny line, like, you know, like he scoffs at the warp four ship. He's like, warp, warp four. <laughs> we'll we'll oh, try. He, he we'll thinks try he can, his ship runs fast. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Like, that was, that was a great moment. So they keep looking and then they start to realize rather slowly that Jane Way and her crew are also in the same base looking well they're actually looking for the guy who escaped from the blow the, the the relay but then they realize that they're also at the base um and each one of them has some kind of encounter with the members of starfleet so gwyn with essentia rock with tysis uh even though she just kind of glances and doesn't really say anything um and then pog with the doc which was just like oh when you stick two tellerites in a room and then finally doll with janeway um how do we how do we feel about the choices they each make when all their answers are right in front of them right hawk okay so rock talk basically she just missed you know she had her back turned to as the endorian officer was walking past so you know um jenkin pog being jenkin pog and that gets into a fight with the tellerite and that over a class because uh, apparently the tellerites have a case system now so um <laughs> that's kind of it's, it's true <laughs> so his offense you know led to him like you know totally missing the opportunity to say hey we got the proto star and that we need help um doll is a little more confusing because he becomes a little flummoxed in that when he meets the real jane way so you know and he's not sure about the right thing to say uh and then by the time what's his name i can never remember this guy's name is it freck Frex. Who? Frex. 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 Yeah, yeah Frex, a uh, little Denobulan and that. He all he's painting by the time he shows up, he has painted Janeway a picture of these people who may have captured or killed Chicote and that and destroyed a star base. You know, so he gets spooked. Again, he's a he's still a kid, you know, and he's just worried about being on the wrong end of like Star of Starfleet Brig. So I kind of understand the choices and, you know, it feels a little plot devicey in that, that, you know, they couldn't, you know, just blurt out that, you know, we've got it. We need your help and that. But again, I kind of understand the choices. Eric. So I, I didn't like this the first time I saw it uh, a number of weeks ago because I was like, oh, that's weird. These kids that have grown so much over the past couple of years, a uh, couple episodes, all of a sudden are just like, fucking up in front of the starfleet people but then doing what uh they're oh, they're fucking oh. up <laughs> <laughs> just keep on adding that beep um <laughs> i i i think i think as i watched it today with my kids um it it's i look at it through their eyes like they're 
scared and they're out alone. And like I said earlier, they they had left their mom and their their home, and they just want to be on the best foot forward, um, except for Jenk Jenksum because he's a he's a dumbass. Uh, <laughs> So, so, so they're trying to, you know, talk to these people and they are trying to get their best foot forward. And then like Dal hears, you know, this other person talking shit about, oh my God damn it. (laughs) 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 Yeah. I forgot about that. Um, that, uh, yeah, like they're, they're painting the worst picture. So he doesn't want to be in trouble. These kids have been in prison for most of their lives. And the thought of them going into jail that they don't know what it's going to be like in Starfleet. I, I don't know if Janeway ever told them what jail was like there. Um, but you got to admit, like, they, they must be scared, like, just to even talk to anyone out there. And the fact that they could go to jail just because they had the protostar and because they've been sort of running and they sort of accidentally blew up a um, star base, you know, it it makes sense. Uh, when Gwen talked to that... Yeah. 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 I... Yeah. I thought that was uh, an amazing scene because Gwen's already running for f- for fear of her father, and the fact that they have her father just made her freak out because she thought that she was done with that and it was over. But to have that fear come back in her life and all that trauma like just snap back into place, man, you can't. I I can't blame her for running. So I don't agree <laughs> with me or in general. In general, okay. <laughs> um, I think that yes, they're scared. Okay, but uh, hologram Janeway has done a very good job of making them understand Star Starfleet uh, values and trust them, and they're here to help you and all this. And when they come in, the mm-hmm. way they look at the insignia, you know, and they're like, "Oh, you Starfleet." I don't think they're scared of Starfleet. I think it just not very well written on that point it's and, not yeah and i have yeah. a i have a pet peeve on this too um as an educ i don't know if you know but as an educator <laughs> we spend so much time explaining to kids if you're scared if there's a problem if you think that something is unsurmountable or is terrifying you or that you messed up very bad talk to me Mm -hmm. talk to somebody do not hide it because very often that's where um you know teenager will think they're in a corner and there's no way to escape when for us adults it's such an easy solution or not really important and over and over again it's one um i mean i'm gonna go a little dark but suicide prevention with teenager is all about this you need to talk to adults you trust. And the adults they trust is Starfleet. Mm -hmm. It is. Hologram Janeway has made sure of this. So I understand Gwyn, absolutely, because the trauma of her father, and she's like, nope, absolutely. Dal, I don't understand. Jankum, I he tries, and then, you know, his pride is still right. I mean, okay, it it works, you know, kind of. Why not? Um, But when Rock Tag said, like, you never told them about the weapon? I was like, thank mm. you. <laughs> Damn. So yeah. they're kind of walking like a very fine line and explaining why, you know, they don't... Gwyn makes sense. Uh, the... Jenkum, okay. Um, Zero doesn't get a chance, right, to talk with anybody. Uh, mm. But I feel it could have been better. Like if Dal would have just talked to Janeway right away, Especially, he, he says Captain Janeway and just like unpack like kids can do. I think, okay, they would not have their plot. They would not have all the, you know, the chase. But for me, it would have been a better uh, lesson to children who are watching it. Yeah, uh, Giraffe literally just uh, took all my notes. I, I took notes. <laughs> um, the, this episode is a stereotypical kids episode of a tv show where they they make all the wrong decisions trope and and i hate that for this show because it goes against the grain of everything that's been happening in the previous episode completely and and i try really really hard 
because I, I, I think it's lazy to say lazy writing most of the time. But in this instance, I, I hate to say it, but it, it, is, it is just lazy writing. They're, they did it like three or four different times in this episode where they use the trope. And I'm sorry, but at, like with the number of crew that they have, the odds aren't there for each one of them to make the same exact mistake. For the reasons I'm about to say, yes, you could say it's a kid's show. But he starts the episode saying, with a captain's log, we want to go to Starfleet. So they go. They leave their home behind. If they were scared, they would stay on that ship and figure something else out. I'm sorry. Um, and then Janeway, as they're leaving, says, listen, if you get into trouble, look the real me up. Look the real me up. And they find the real Janeway. And they're in trouble. And, it, and, and Eric, you were mentioning jail. Like, She's she's Janeway. She's mm. not gonna throw kids in the brig. Yeah, but I mean, they she's good at them. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm well. gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that later. But it just oh. And then yeah, the the whole thing with Pog like getting offended, you know, because he literally was about to say, "Oh, I'm supposed to." Oh, but wait, you called me this. Like, come on, let's not do that, please. Like. We've been saying that we need Pog to do something. Have him be the hero for once and say, hey, living construct, I literally was just scanning it with my tricorder. Like, here you go. Let me, like, stop being a Tellerite for five seconds. Drove me insane. I think the the, the, the fault here is more on the doctor. Like, Well, it is. A, like, yeah, he's he, that, that was extremely, like, that was some and, Dr. McCoy crap right there. Like, Oh, yeah, I was, whoa. <laughs> That's not something you say to a random person. No, especially if met. you're especially if you're Starfleet. Uh, I I will completely agree. If anybody is in the right to be scared here, it's Gwen. Mm -hmm. I would have done the same thing, right? Like her father is evil. Like he is a bad guy. So when Asensia, who's like, hey, we have him. He cares about you. She's like, uh uh, bye. I get I get that. That is the one character of all this that makes sense. So. Then Dahl just is there, and, and like Jarrah said, he can just spit it all out. And he doesn't. He just sits there waiting, and a little dude shows up. I wouldn't have given him the chance to talk. I'd just been like, hey, Dahl, Dahl has an attitude. Dahl does not have a problem saying things. So the fact that he just skittered off away makes no sense after the things that he's done the past few weeks. Um, uh, and then Zero... Like, Zero is the only one with some common sense who's like, oh, you found them. Like, good. But they didn't talk to them. Zero could have been like, no, stop. I'm the adult here. Let's turn around and go sort this out. And that doesn't happen. And, and the other thing is saying, well, like, they're going to get in trouble. Janeway, like Giraffe has said, has put them in the best possible position to do right. We know this. Why? Because every single episode for the past few has started with Dahl doing a captain's log. They have logs. They have logs. They have records. Mm -hmm. There's no fault here. So it just doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense. It, uh, uh, and then and then as they're doing the, the Star Wars speeder chase away from the, the Zindi, <laughs> Pog is like, oh, now we'll never see Starfleet. And I'm like, they're behind you. <laughs> they're literally behind you. You're running away from them. I, I cannot stand this trope, and this is why this is one of my least favorite episodes of Star Trek ever. Mm. Um, I, I could not take it, and I watched it a couple times to make sure I wasn't just having a bad day. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. I mean, they have five more episodes to go, right? Five. Yeah, uh, five. Six. 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 Yeah. So yeah. I mean, they're driving the plot, and I understand this again can make sense if they were adults for kids i do think it's just it set up a, you know let's change the let's change the the perspective <laughs> let's trust the adult that's not trustworthy uh yeah anyway yeah. <laughs> jess k yeah. wrote this is like in lower decks where they have to trust the system but mariner doesn't good point yeah yeah i suppose yeah yeah um, I just. Oh, yeah. by the way, there Janeway has no way to find a ship if she finds them. So they could just talk to her. She wouldn't touch the ship until they said yeah, where the ship was, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because they shut it off. So 
Yep. I mean, she. I don't know. She has a dumb place. <laughs> she can do whatever she wants. <laughs> um. So I, I I think we've already mentioned his name and I forgot him because he's a runt. Um. But the officer who's in charge of the relay station. Rex. He, Rex. Re, yeah. He IDs that the kids after their encounters with you know all the encounters with with Janeway's crew. So as I just went on a long rant about instead of the kids trying to ex- stay and explain, they decide to run back to the proto star, the one place where they cannot communicate with Starfleet anymore and get away with Okana with them. <laughs> what do we think about this choice? Hawk. Um, like I said, there's a lot of this is just to drive the plot on, you know, that the, the ship stays in the possession of the kids so that we can move forward to the next episode, next episode and the next season and that. And it's like, at some point, you're wondering if, it, if this ship is ever going to make it to, into Starfleet. Um, even though, even still, it's like, yeah, you mentioned that they they buried the ship and they kind of had the upper hand. Janeway couldn't have done anything until they found out. But then again, as Jan- as Giraffe points out, they do have the Dauntless, and they could have scanned the ship. if they knew that the kids were actually there, which they didn't know when they landed on this planet. Yeah. They could have had the ship scan and look for any large, you know, s- signatures you know on the surface so um but you know this led to the chase and to the whole thing with the speeders and that and uh it was okay and that i thought it was actually kind of a little homage to indiana jones and the temple of doom and that with the uh at the beginning with the, <laughs> the you know they're staying at the avalanche yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so it was okay it was pretty good but, you know but like i said getting the choices they made in the plot to get to that point where they actually go back to the ship are still sus. Sus. Yeah, they could have been better. Mm. Mm, Eric. I'm good. <laughs> I'm just, Eric I'm just thinking. thinking. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Like, what did I think about the chase? It was, you know, it was. It the, had Cindy. <laughs> it was the it was the second act. Um, like the the action set piece. I, I knew it was coming. Uh, obviously, um, I thought it was, I thought it was fun. It was a fun thing to watch with my kids. They're like, oh, look, things are exploding and snow is flying everywhere and it's snowing now. So they're happy that they see snow on TV too, I guess. Um, (laughs) they had, uh, what's his name? Okana with them. Again, I don't really care about the character. So, and, and, and while you say that, I'm going to read Jess's comment. Why do they trust Akana and not Janeway? Stranger danger. The more I think about this, the less I like it, Giraffe. You are so right. It's such a bad message to kids about trust. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's a weird choice. It's yeah. a weird choice. I, I, I don't think they just went like, ah, oh, let's tell kids to, you know, trust weirdos. Right. <laughs> In rally stations, like, but... um. No, it's a subject that is uh, important to me. That's why, I, you know, it's it's so hard to tell kids, you can't tell me things. Like, I swear, yeah. I swear I will help you. Um, so, yeah, when I see this, someone's like, come on, give a good example of an adult, please. Yeah, uh, yeah Okona, again, I don't know. And I, he looks like a creep. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> the eye patch. <laughs> huh? I don't know. He looks a little suave with that. You know, iPad. He, he looks creepy. Like he, he's he not even like a cool a looking kid, Han Solo. Yeah. To a kid, you think he's got an eye patch? Like... I'm not saying like you know. I'm not. Kids love pirates, but oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Kids love pirates. Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't have anything else about that. No, uh, it, it was fine. Yeah. I really like the animation. Like yeah. the avalanche was so well done. It looked so. I don't know. The protostar I'm coming like, out, oh amazing. Yeah. The protostar coming out in front of Janeway, being like, I'm, <laughs> Janeway bigger, was just like... I'm bigger than a spaceship. I'm like, I love that woman so much. <laughs> the way she talks to the kid, and you're like, you don't know if she's like being mean or nice. And you're like, oh, no, she's being nice. And you're like, I'm like slightly terrified, but like really in love at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the shots were absolutely gorgeous. They just kill a bunch of people, though. Like, can we like just stop yeah. at the fact they just like murdered? It's, like, it's snow. Me? They're fine. <laughs> and like, you were just like, like shooting at them. I'm like, whoa, okay. Does Indy yeah. deserve it? <laughs> 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 um, MC brings up a great point. Uh, Janeway was in the wrong as well. Doll was obviously needing help, and she just goes, "Oh, you want to be in Starfleet? Like, where are your instincts, Janeway?" 
So I think it for me it was like kind of I mean she has a kid that come to her and like oh, did you ever like really so she, wanted he's something fanboying, yeah. and then like and she's like oh you want to be and so she's, a speech. she's also she's a celebrity like yeah. remember this like she's a huge celebrity like she came back with Voyager they were lost for seven years everybody talked about him uh, she defeated the Borg I mean she's a but <sighs> but also she's like single mindedly focused on getting the ship and or trying to figure things yeah. out because yeah. as we Jay. as we see at the end she's a little bit yeah. emotionally yeah. like compromised because it's Chakotay. great acting by the way yeah. by mm -hmm. Debbie Diggs at the end of the episode there mm -hmm. oh yeah oh yeah it was so good. guns and chips yeah. man like, yeah. <laughs> guns and chips oh, goosebumps <laughs> uh, I don't have anything else to say on on the escape because I ranted about it but I'll, I'll say jank and pog again going i guess we're never gonna see starfleet and, <laughs> right and just trusting you. a random guy to yeah. put like that magical liquid on the thing and just yeah. like go fast you're like okay yep. <laughs> choices um, <laughs> so they're they're back aboard the protostar they have that awesome shot of when they're getting in the space of the Dauntless, which is huge, oh, huge. just coming up on the on the uh, the protostar. The protostar is like this. It's like it's like the like Vader's you know executor star destroyer coming up on the Millennium Falcon. Like, just, mm. Mm. Um, so I don't like happened. the Dauntless. I don't like it. Oh, I think it's hideous. It looks but that, terrible. That shot was cool. I hate it the ship cool. design. Yeah. but that shot was cool. I hate the ship design. Um, so they go face to face, and then the protostar goes to warp with Janeway right on their tail. Uh, she tries to hail, but Dahl does make yet another adult choice, saying, like, no, don't answer it. And, and this is why they put themselves in a, a dumb situation again, right? Like, they could have talked to them, and now they can't talk to them again. It's just, oh, it's so frustrating. But he does make the right decision by not answering. Um, so they don't answer. During the pursuit, Murph completes his transformation into a squishy bipedal and accidentally sits on the photon <laughs> torpedo launcher. That was adorable. Sending one and hitting the Dauntless. Was this a good way to reintroduce Murph? Thank you, Giraffe. Hawk. I, um, uh, I don't know. It, it almost seems like, you know, Murph's, you know, well, birth from that cocoon could have, you know, taken up like at least half of, the, of a of an episode on its own in that. And this, with all the confusion going on in that, you know, this was just one more thing that they add to it. You know, it's like, hey, birth's being born, and he's going to change. You know, um, and the but it was it was kind of comical seeing him sitting on the thing and launching a, a photon torpedo at them when they're trying to just basically not you know not get not let starfleet get their hands on the protostar and yet not antagonize them any further you know and you know because janeway at this point is antagonized and that she was she is scary when she is on the hunt mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's very true yeah, yeah when she turns and she's looking at it, like in the in the station and she goes like it's yeah. them i'm like oh yeah. you better they're, run they're here <laughs> oh uh, uh yeah sorry i thought you were done yeah i think i'm done i i, I think i think if murph felt rushed yeah jess k said the said it perfectly i didn't mind this as an introduction because a i like the three stooges and this is a three stooges, three stooges bit also i like that murph is a toddler now because i have a toddler and Seeing Murph on the console just kicking its legs there or her legs, I'm, Murph's a girl, right? No, Murph is a. I, I always just go Murph's a they. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, 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 th I thought they they scanned it a couple episodes. And anyway, Murph sitting there kicking its legs is just like a toddler sitting on a table kicking its legs, and then all of a sudden it kicks you in the nuts. Like that is exactly <laughs> what this was. That's a great point. That's so, a great point. Yeah, <laughs> when yeah. I saw it, I was like, oh, of course, a <laughs> little toddler Murph did that. Of course. Why not? It, it isn't the second time he does it. I think in the first or second episode, uh, it jumps on the console. The, console. And the first yeah. one, and for the phasers. Fire. Yeah, the first one, uh, the phasers, yeah. And that's how they escape, right? Which is like babies. They put everything in their mouths. Yeah. Oh, it's like watching my kids grow up. <laughs> I, uh, so. I hated it uh, with uh, the fire of 10,000 suns uh, <laughs> because it looks so creepy and ridiculous at the same time. I don't know how I feel. 
like he Murph. looks like a Teletubby. They look like a Teletubby. Oh Murph, no, like that's a, what it looked like. like with the little thing slug? on top. Yes, I don't like uh, that. <laughs> like a slug was like fun because I don't know. There's something fun about you know Yafit and Murph, like this kind of like thing. I don't know. Uh, I had said it's gonna be something talking, walking, and I <laughs> like put your body was almost right not talking thank god um but when like murph arrived from behind the console i was like <laughs> why <laughs> who who did that why it's so weird like it makes me so uncomfortable looking at it i'm just like what's that thing on its head like <laughs> i don't know i don't like it at all and then yeah the 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 photon torpedo, oh, I was like, okay, I suppose. It's very Shaq's like, let me buy a demo! <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I like Murph. I don't like Murph anymore. I think, um, one, I don't like the new design either. He looks like, they look like a weird Teletubby. Um, like, this is this is marketable, right? Like, this is marketable. And I'm not saying that you can't make a stuffy out of new Murph, but, like, like Jarrah said, like, Slug Murph is better. The Photon Torpedo just was kind of, like, the last straw for me. I, I think had the tropes with the crew not happened, I maybe would have given this a pass, but it was just all of that then combined with new ugly Murph sitting on a console, Ooh. like, like firing a foot, like a, you know, it wasn't even phasers, like a full on full time <laughs> torpedo. <laughs> it's just like, I don't, don't last to, you know, <laughs> I wanted, I wanted it to do like in lower decks when like they're going full speed with the shuttle and just, go, yeah, it's dink, right? <laughs> it was that would just, have, I would have lost my mind. Like it was just going like, boop. it was just <laughs> like less. one trope too many in these episodes. And it was just like, oh, the toddler breaking stuff trope. Ah. Uh, I, I just I I I couldn't. I, th this episode was just trope after trope, trope after trope after trope. Um, and 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 MC is right, and I'm not going to allude to anything. Obviously, Murph is in the show, and obviously, Murph is in the next episode. I think we need to give Murph a new Murph a chance. We only get a brief look. You know what they're going to do with Murph, right? They're going to make like a Stretch Armstrong type that of Murph cool. so that you can like yeah. play with it yeah, and just yeah, like yeah. mold it. Yeah. Uh, Jessica is actually super right i think that's why i don't like it Jess, is that because it was a slug and then it cocooned you imagine it's gonna grow in something insect-like or butterfly-like yeah. and it's bipedal and you're like what kind of animal like it doesn't yeah. make sense in my biology like i don't know it just, yeah so oh, giraffe that's not mm, after yeah. so i watched this one with uh, my kids right and after last week and they saw the cartoon they're like oh it's gonna turn into a butterfly it's gonna fly around and then this week they're like oh that's weird that's, that's what they said yeah. i was like okay that's a funny. weird choice <laughs> it's a really weird choice uh, what did your kids think of the new design? Did did they see uh, it? Ces Cecily loves it. Oh, okay. I, I but but Cecily said very quickly, "I like old Murph better." Um, oh, you all do. So you all do. I think it's a maybe a, did, the design at least is a missed opportunity. Did, yeah, well, but, it would have made more sense if they did the first half of the season, sold this that type of um murph toys and then you get right. this one and then they sell this next set like what they did with transformers and they killed off optimus prime in the movie right that's why they killed you them mean off star trek franchise having like merchandising? smart marketing smart marketing it's more oh. it's more nickelodeon right they're like the convention i mean come on nickelodeon <laughs> should have jumped on this they're good with toys yeah. generally yeah they are right? yeah they are yeah mm, yep. true um and then finally <laughs> Janeway, because Hawk said it, she's a tiger, man. Like when 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 crap hits the fan, she just is like fire, and boom, taking out the the proto drive. Uh, the I like how Asensio was like, "Oh, there's the fire. It's her daughter." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, boom. Uh, the exit warp right outside the Romulan neutral zone. Uh, despite Hollow Janeway's warnings, the team enter the zone, 
and the Dauntless ceases pursuit because why draft? I'm going to skip Hawkins' draft. Why? Ah! <laughs> the Dared Expert of Prey, the Cloaking. I mean, can we just speak how, like, I think every single Romulan just leaves in the neutral zone. That's not possible. <laughs> no, they do. They do. They just, just have here, ships just lined like up on the like... line, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was incredible. That was incredible. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it's not my turn. Go ahead. No, no, no. no. Hawk, go ahead. No, keep... No, I thought giraffe keep going. This is... You know. no, 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 I go at the end. <laughs> uh, I just wanted the... you to say Romulan's giraffe. That was really what that was about. <laughs> Romulans, it was great, and yeah, this was the first time, like, you know, one of the first times we've seen Janeway in that, where it's like it's so focused on her intent and her mission and that, and yeah, a little blindsided because it's her, you know, her friend Chakotay and that, and his life on the line as far as she's concerned and that, but she was totally gonna break, you know, she was gonna break like regulations and cross into the neutral zone. Someone who doesn't like to break regulations like more than picard mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you know this was big and it's like thank god like you know like the first officer was there to talk her down and like basically say i refuse to carry out this order yeah yeah it's good stuff very good stuff. um sorry i'm drawing a design of something that i want to make for you guys later um um Ooh, <laughs> yeah. i just had an idea um this was my favorite section yeah. with Admiral Janeway in anything that we've seen so far. Um, I loved seeing her relentless pursuit of these kids, um, mm -hmm. even going so far as to go into the neutral zone just so that she could find Chicote, which I still That's think is they're in love, which I think is gross and weird. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm with Julian on this one. I I I understand. I just it's still weird. It's not as weird as the seven of nine thing, but it's still weird. <laughs> well, I don't anyway. He built her, built her a tub. Yeah, a tub, Eric. <laughs> a tub. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But she already has babies with another uh, Voyager person. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, I love that her crew actually stood up to her. And I think that was an amazing thing that yeah. that shows that they trust each other enough or they, they know that each other so well that they can be like, you know what? You're effing up right now. See, I, 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 I hey. censored you. myself <laughs> there. Um, <laughs> and man, David Diggs was so good in that role. Um, and everyone on that, um, everyone on that bridge crew was just watching her sort of spiral a little bit out of control um and i loved it and then you see the romulans show up and they're just like badass and i i can't i i loved it i loved it i thought this sequence is amazing um i just gotta read mc's comment real quick. <laughs> i know Chakot so I, was, I almost lost it chakotay <laughs> and seven hooked up because they were both in love with janeway and couldn't have her i mean it is known that it the whole known. voyager yeah. crew is a polycule mm -hmm. right oh totally <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they spent seven years together. Come on. Yep. Come on. Uh, it's the future. Giraffe Romulans. <laughs> yeah. So, first of all, Janeway shooting at the Prada star made my day. <laughs> 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 because if she hadn't, I would have been like, that's weird. It's not the Janeway we know. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's the the Janeway of the highway, right? <laughs> And, um, I mean, the shot is precise, it's perfect, it doesn't harm them, knocks them out of war. Like, she knew that she was you know. going to wait for them to get that third nacelle out, yeah. too. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Smart, yeah, that was calculated. That was a strategy, you know? Like, that's why yeah. she's a vice admiral. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, then the neutral zone, it gave us a, yeah, then the neutral zone, it give us a little bit more information on where they are because there's been always the question. It's very complicated to understand where is Prodigy taking place. They're in the Beta Quadrant, but then in the Alpha, but like the Beta, but the Delta. It's just like very confusing. So at least we know the neutral zone. <laughs> it is known. And um, I loved the, the, the conversation with uh, the first officer, Tysis, right? Tysis, yeah. Oh my God, he looks so cool. 
He looks I'm awesome. He's like one of my. He's no. He's like he one of my new he, favorite Star Trek characters. I'm loving. And Dorian, I also love Dummy Diggs. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, the conversation is so incredible. I don't know if kids understood it though. No, oh. maybe not. My it, this, my daughter did. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, yeah, yeah. she is going out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Even like the the political thing about like you're gonna start a war that you don't want to start, and that's funny because mm. we had this in Strange New Worlds, we have this uh, again in Prodigy. This, you know, don't play with the Romulans. What is happening with Star Trek? They're giving me so many Romulans. I guess. <laughs> you're gonna get a Romulan show. <laughs> yeah. Every series, lower decks. Give... <laughs> oh, awesome! Oh, there nice. it is. Nice triplets. Uh, Strange New Worlds finishing on a, a, a Romulan uh, plot, and now the Romans. There are too many Romulan costumes. I cannot make them all, but <laughs> yes, I will make can. them all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the moment where they appeared right away, because, you know, it's a bit like a cat and mouse kind of game. Yeah. You're like, maybe they're not going to be here. Maybe you're knocking at the door, there's nobody. But no, nah, <laughs> they're just like dick looking right away. It's like, nah. So I want to understand too the neutral zone. Normally it's neutral. That means that everybody should be like around, but like clearly it's only the Romulans <laughs> like doing whatever they want. Oh, and... they're they're there to give them a friendly reminder that you're about to enter into the neutral zone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I like the fact that they changed the um, the signature of the um, the the, um, the shields. That's how they enter, and they can enter. And I'm like, I'm kind of calling, uh, yeah, too easy on that. Yeah, that was weird. Like, yeah, the Romans absolutely saw them. There's no way. Oh, they were clocked, bro. So, you know, when they're clocked, they cannot see anything. But anyway, like, I think there's maybe a plot to get the protostar. I mean, there's a plot inside a plot, inside a plot, inside a plot, inside a plot. Oh, so... you mean Star Trek? Uh, I mean Romulans. Like they never <laughs> do anything for no reason, and there may be multiple reasons, and only one is true. So, you know, the other thing is, I love that their uh, uniform is a callback to NTNG and Star Trek Online. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, it's the it's the Romulan uniform on uh, like with the sash on the side like this. So I really like the crossover. Like they're each time making something new. The, the logo is so cool. I mean, they're doing a great job. And I mean, Black Roman Commander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, she's going to be my, my new favorite, I'm pretty sure. Commander Kasseth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, gorgeous design. Oh, I love the Roman Bird Bur of Fred. Dederick's. It's a timeless shit. design of the Derridex. It's awesome. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So I can't wait to see what's happening in the neutral zone. I'm really interested in seeing too if they're gonna adapt, uh, if they're gonna adopt more a Picard design uh, of the Romulans or like you know the the the, the, the uniform are gonna go a little bit more TNG or are they gonna be like a you know, STO? Like I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. Uh, that was that was perfect. That's what I wanted. Uh, just see you to go off on Romulans. Uh, for me, this, this it's it's crazy, right? Like this it almost seems like this episode was written by by two different people, or like written at like two different completely like frames of mind. The first five minutes of the episode are fantastic, and the last five minutes of the episode are fantastic. Like that whole Tysis Janeway scene is like what I live for in Star Trek. It was so good, and David Diggs. If you haven't seen Hamilton yet watch hamilton if you don't watch snowpiercer watch snow who hasn't seen hamilton people <laughs> haven't seen no what? i watched it but i didn't understand anything i was like who is that who is yep. that who is that who is that um, just, was like, just stop <laughs> we're, we're gonna talk more about tysis in in the in the um easter egg hunt because there's a cool moment there but he's awesome i i love that janeway is you know like when janeway sets her mind on something sometimes to a fault and her decision is made she doesn't always see straight and i like that tysis reminds her of that um great 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 scene final thoughts on this episode before we get to the easter egg hunt um it's an okay episode not obviously has some major plot holes you know in the writing uh which i was a little disappointed because everything's been like really good coming you know so far um i'm hoping they kind of get back on track next week but um yeah, it's like you said, the first five first five minutes was great. Last bit was great. And that the whole middle section almost felt like a bottle episode, but we never really kind of 
usually there's some sort of moral to take away from each episode in that. Like last week's, you know, it was brilliant, mm. you know. Um, this we didn't really have we didn't really kind of get a lesson of the week or the kids really didn't take anything positive away from this. So yeah. yeah. I don't mind it. I watched it with my kids. They had fun. I generally like things better when I'm with my kids. So I, when I watched it a couple weeks, it's fun watching things with them and watching, I like watching the reactions to a lot of things. The reactions are great. Yes. Um, So watching them during the snow chase was cool because they're like, you know, on the edge of their seats, watching them (laughs) Murph emerge and be like, what the F is that? (laughs) And then (laughs) doing the torpedo, like it it was a fine, it was, it was fun. It was a fun episode, right? I, I, it was fun, but not, you know, substance, like there wasn't much substance. I loved some stuff and I hated some stuff. So it's really hard to know there's the 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 animation was gorgeous but i hated their klingon they looked so weird oh he was right out of star trek six the big anime eyes true like nah uh -uh, like that was so weird to me i don't like their klingon at all but the avalanche was great the dauntless the proto star rising like they were amazing shot the the deridexy cloaking the two were gorgeous thing uh i love the end i have so many hang up with the dialogue, uh, especially Janeway going over and over again saying the word savages, mm-hmm. which is like it's 2022 and it's already not okay to call anybody a savage that you don't know who they are, and especially in a federation of so many different cultures. The fact that Frex says it, I'm okay because he's we are not supposed to like him, but Janeway that shocked me. Damn. And then there's this incredible scene with Tysis where it's super well written. I don't know. Yeah. Gave me some of the best moments and some of the worst writing. So I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Probably one of like my least favorite episodes of Star Trek ever. Not not a fan. Um great final act. Well, final 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 act, like the last five minutes. Um, other than that not a lot to like did love seeing the cecily has if you've heard her laugh one of the best laughs so when murph comes around that corner like him or not like them or not that laugh is just really she's like like it's look at murph look at murph it's like that's awesome like mm. eric said it is fun watching with your kids still hated it but fun watching it with my kids <laughs> um let's get in to the easter egg hunt does anybody have any that aren't on my list go ahead read the people read the list <laughs> what what make there's an outline I make all the time. Uh, so you want some that are not on the thing let me grab the the outline where's the outline yeah i gotta look uh, it up too let's see i mean i uh, could just cross them off no just say ones that you have and i'll cross them off the list and read what's left so. the romulan uh, uh, theme was hinted at when they hinted. showed um yep. they did the voyager theme obviously yes. anytime admiral Janeway shows up especially uh, with doll though yeah yeah fair yeah uh, there's a moment where uh, uh, Zero goes, oh my. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Uh, it really made me think of Timeless with the ship buried in the ice. Uh, I do think there was a a little, like, note to it. Um, I was wondering, like, this fashion with, like, the big glasses, is that in the, in the Undiscovered Country? Where is it where they have, like, these, like, snow... Uh, Oh, it made me think of Khan outfits. Khan, well, the, in, uh, yeah, the, in Wrath yeah, of Khan. The big, like, yeah. yeah, and the, the hood. Uh, I don't know if it was like a direct like Easter egg, yeah. but really made me think of that. Um, yeah, what else? The Roman theme, sure. Uh, Kazan. Okay, K- all right, you saw the Kazan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zindis, yep. Okana. Um, Okana. For the... <laughs> yeah, that's all for me, I think. Yeah. Anything else? They couldn't have done the damn avians in these this time. I just want to see them. They're all dead. No, I I want them to be back. I want them to be back. They're just giraffes. But giraffes with wings, I suppose. (laughs) Um, There was Tellarites obviously being rude to each other. We we know that that's a thing. Um, Yeah, Okana, when he was like, you know, trying to sell them on his ship. 
hardcore like she'll make the castle run in eight eight parsecs or 12 whatever many it was it's like yeah she'll go warp four uh that would totally a, a throw to a new hope and han solo uh, just because they're hilarious and they're everywhere in in pop culture rock talk totally making meteorologist jokes you know about not being exact science uh i love meteorologist jokes not a star trek easter egg but just a meteorologist easter egg the klingon is wearing the uniform from undiscovered country which is an interesting take but i like it um and then going back to that amazing scene with tyses um when he says to janeway that she once told him to listen to his emotions not be guided by them you gotta know that that is something that tuvok bestowed upon janeway like some of that vulcan knowledge i like that that's probably a very hidden tuvok reference see cultures in contact a yep. Vulcan tells something to a human who tells Tell something, something to an, to an Andorian. Andorian. Yes. Love it. Yes. And then they're going to try that on the Romulans and it's not going to work. Nope. Because <laughs> Romulans don't here. give an F. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's rate this one out of 10 accidental photon torpedoes. YouTube Collective, let us know. Hawk, what do you got? Um, I'm going to say 6-5 for this episode. Good, um, good, good. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, good, good <laughs> beginning, sorry. good back end, but the middle was just. Yeah. I'm gonna say seven five, which will probably be the highest one today. <laughs> I'm gonna say six, and they get more than the average because the Romulan really beats everything that I didn't like in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's high. Romulans, Janeway. Tyses, three out of ten. Oh, Whoa. Oh. Yep. I that mean, you've it. been saying you didn't like this episode, and when I watched it on Sunday, I was like, I know you were really confused why I didn't like it. I thought you were going to text me and tell me at one point, ah, you're going to lose your mind at that episode. And then I'd be like, what is the what are they talking about? <laughs> but no, nobody told me that I was going to lose my mind that episode. No, you know why I was so mad about all the other stuff. I forgot about the Romulans. At the you end. forgot about well, no, the I didn't black forget. No, <laughs> come on. I was in a rage. Okay, I was in a rage. Over on YouTube, we have Haven giving this one a ten. MC giving this a seven out of ten. Jesco seven out of ten. Maggie Light six out of ten. Kang seven out of ten. That's okay. I will be the bag. Oh, oh, Chris, four out of ten. Terrible Murph evolutions. <laughs> oh boy all right uh let's get to the subspace to pull and mailbag hailing frequencies are open who wants the to pull who Ooh. wants it who Me. wants uh, it dope oh, oh. giraffe and hawk fight each other no, no i actually was going to point out that uh the actual subspace to pull numbers are not actually in the subspace to pull. Oh, did i forget to put them in there <laughs> well, I guess I'm doing the subspace to pull. Well, uh, before yes, that, there's an so. Easter egg that Haven uh, wrote in the chat. Uh, apparently, according to Trek Core, the planet was from Timeless. Oh. That oh. was the planet giraffe. Fucking oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited too. It's like one of my favorite Star Trek episodes. Yep. And Wayner gave it a seven. And Wayner gave it a seven. The vibe. See, I got the vibe. Maybe. Maybe there's something in the music that, I don't know, something tipped me off. Yeah. That's anyway. an interesting, I like it. I like it. Uh, so we asked Trek Twitter what they thought. Oh, by the way, this might be uh, the last Trek Twitter poll that we'll move them to Mastodon. Uh, what what they thought of this week's episode of Prodigy. And this is what they had to say. 69. Cool, dude. Uh, nice. Said, nice. <laughs> <laughs> said, Murph of a good time. 20% said, doll in. 11% said needed more Zindi and 0%. Obviously I didn't vote in this poll said, throw me in a torpedo. So still majority liked it. So good on them. Um, Haven's <laughs> mailbag. Who wants it? Uh, Hawk go and we'll go in our order. Take Haven's please. Haven wrote, we had the most amazing week this week with the launch of Artemis, the hatching of Murph and Romulan Warbirds. Absolutely incredible. Literally, the only thing that would make it better would be a Star Trek Discovery trailer of or the Seven Rafi show being announced. Mm -hmm. Truly the best of Trek today, 10 out of 10. Shatterhand wrote, With every new episode, Prodigy continues to impress me. This week's episode was a blast and one of the best of the season, as far as I'm concerned. 
I should have read that as a full sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens next. Chris wrote, okay, that Vice Admiral hooded cloak jacket is so gorgeous. Yes, yeah. It is. yeah. Right. right. Yes. Someone make me one. I know some people out there might be saying Okana, but no Kana. <laughs> <laughs> no Kana. Okay. I got but it. I am in the camp Mokana. <laughs> I just wish he had he was carrying a boom box like in lower decks. That Who's would have made it better. Romulans yeah. or boss AF. Yes. Yes. I am so excited to see where things go this season. Nice. Um, did you have something, Eric, real quick? No. They go you up. Raised, you no, you raised <laughs> <laughs> they go up. Uh Takako wrote, This was an exciting episode. All the game pieces are in play, and I don't know where it's going. But I'm looking forward to finding out how they solve the communication slash sabotage weapon slash showing up and a stolen starship slash where's Chakotay plot lines. Indeed. Back to you, Hawk. And why Rally I wrote, I really want to like this episode more, but Rock was right when she asked, how come no one mentioned the living construct to Starfleet? Ding, ding. Oh, um, I need to check my timeline to see how close this is to the Romulan supernova. I think two super years. I believe close. it's two years. Two years. Two yeah. years. Yeah. Yep. Because wow, the doll like star date really, matches up. Really yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, it's. I, I think it's uh, a, a few months, or I think it's a few months before so, the synth attack, or right after the synth attack. Yeah. So basically, the Romans already know that it's going to happen, most yeah. probably. And it's Picard's well official. underway with his mission. Yeah. If you have not read Second Self, you should. You should read Second <laughs> Self. It's true. Very yes. true. Draft. Uh, yes. Go take your bays. Go take your bay. She's the last one. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, my bay is take us home right now. <laughs> MC wrote, once the crew entered the neutral zone, I said to myself, oh, that's why I could hear Giraffe scream of joy all the way from California. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly lost it when they went full Han Solo with Okana. Just outrageous audacity, <laughs> writers. I was screaming for everyone to just talk to Jane Way. <laughs> oh, we lost talk. His internet crept out. <laughs> um, that's all right we're ending it's the show sure. anyway it's so goodbye sure. hawk <laughs> subspace channel closed on hawk's end um guys that's gonna do it for this one not every episode could be a good episode and some people liked it so that's good hawk is back um i'll wait for him to come back to the outro even though he's frozen no he's maybe frozen. not hey he's find frozen. me at la comic con I First weekend of sun of uh, December, I'll be there. I'll be covering the national cosplay championships too. Ooh, so come say nice. hi. Yay. Awesome. Um, gonna Back. wish everybody in the yep. U.S. if you're spending time with your families a very happy Thanksgiving next Thursday. We will be dropping our episode Thursday morning. We're gonna be re pre-recording that our review of episode 115. So if you're traveling that day, you could listen to us in your car or your shuttlecraft or however you're traveling um transporters gonna, transporters <laughs> that would be that would be great uh that is gonna do it for this one guys for draft for eric for hawk i am julian i say live long and prosper majram good night thanks for beaming into our podcast today if you want to keep the hailing frequencies open you can subscribe on apple and google podcasts youtube and spotify like what you hear Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.